Um, it's a good morning, but it's a sad week, isn't it? Unfortunately, on Friday, something terrible happened, um, and we can't ignore that. Um, we can see that Satan is working, isn't it? Um, and I pray asking God to give us wisdom to know how to cope with tragedies when they take place, but also to give us discernment on how to read this Bible in a way that brings <coughs> glory to Him. Most of these attacks, they are done in the name of God, but not the God of the Bible. And this is why we are on a series called Long Story Short. It's a series where we're going to see from Genesis to Revelation who this God actually is, not who we think He is. So we can understand what He wants from us. So we don't make the wrong assumptions of what we think He wants from us. So we look at Genesis 1 and 2 to understand how God created the world and how He made us. And He made us for a purpose. He made us into His image so we could reflect Him, His love. So He wanted us to love one another in a horizontal and in a vertical way. And He gave us a mission. Multiply and be my managers here. Glorify me. What did we do in Genesis 3? We actually, human beings, rebelled against God and His perfect plan. And as a result, we had to leave this perfect paradise called the Garden of Eden. But He made a promise. In Genesis 3.15, He said, through, through the seed of the woman will come the one who would crush the serpent's head. What does it mean, Alex? Well, later on, we found out that God calls a man named Abraham. And what does he do? He makes a promise to him. Through your seed, singular, not plural. Through your offspring, singular, not plural. I will bless the nations. I will bless the entire world. Go, Abraham. Go, because I am a missionary God. Huh? A missionary God? Yes. God is a God on mission. So he sends Abraham. And later on we read in Exodus, God sending Moses. Moses, go. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let you guys go free. So you can keep going. And later on, when Moses dies, what we read, Joshua being called by God. Why? To go as well. And you read from Genesis to Malachi, God is a sending God, a God on mission, sending people to accomplish a mission. What mission is that? To bless the nations. And two weeks ago, we read one of the Gospels in the New Testament that mentions God's Son, Jesus, who came because He was sent. Jesus was sent by the Father to die on a cross, to save us from hell by dying on a cross, to pay for our sins, and He rose after three days to give us eternal life, to give us an eternal relationship with Him. And last week, what did we, did we study? Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. God calls his disciples, and what does he say to them? Go, because our God is a God of mission, is a God who is constantly sending us out. And now we're going to see how that is put into practice. Diana read a beautiful passage, and thank you very much, Diana. Thank you. About a man called Paul. And just to give a context before we actually read the text, 
Who was Paul? Paul was a Pharisee. And when he heard about these Christians who are going, what does he do? He asks for an authorization to kill Jews. So don't think terrorist attacks is something new. <laughs> it's something old, okay? It seemed during the early church, we see that all the time. And Paul, the author, the writer of this letter, he was a terrorist. He was killing Christians. But one day, God called him. And God said, from now on, you are part of the mission. You are going. You are go Your job is to go to the Gentiles. To those who never heard about this God we have. It's time to bless the nations. It's time to accomplish the mission that I gave to Abraham. And Paul is going to help us here to understand how to accomplish this mission. How to go. But before we actually read the passage, let me ask a question. After this short Bible review I just gave you about this missionary God. Question, what kind of missionary are you? What kind of missionary are you? I think I made myself clear here, isn't it? From Genesis, and we're going to see to Revelations. Revelation, we are here on a mission. So there is no way you can say, no, I'm not part of this mission. I'm not a missionary. Yes, you are. Or, as this person used to say, every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. It's someone who thinks he's a Christian. It's someone who thinks he, he, he has part of this mission, but in his comfort or her comfort zone. And I love this quote. And just to let you know, the guy who said that, he was in this area over 250 years ago. So it's not something new, right? He was like, guys, <laughs> over 250 years ago in Elephant Castle, wake up. Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. Don't lie to yourself. If you're not on a mission, don't call yourself a Christian. But Alex, I'm not like you who moved from Brazil to London to, to see this mission being accomplished. I can't do that, Alex. Okay, just to clarify, you don't need to pack your things and move to a different nation to be a missionary. You can be a missionary where you are. You can bless the nations where you are. Why do you think I came to London? Because this is a great mission field. Life was easy in Brazil, wasn't it, Alô? It was nice. Great job, great house, great car. Nice, comfort life. Why coming to London? Because we are on a mission, and this place is a great mission field. So don't think I'm telling you to move to another place. I'm actually up begging you, stay here. Because the author of this letter, he would surely be here. He could see the potential of it. So, does that mean I have to move overseas, Alex? No, you can stay in London to be a missionary. Not at all. You can be a missionary here, okay? So, what we're going to do today? We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 19 and 23. We're not going to go through the whole chapter, okay? <laughs> Uh, just because Diana read the whole chapter, we're not going to go through the whole, whole chapter. We don't have time for that, but she gave us the context. She gave us the context. So what's my aim? To show you how you can be a missionary in London. Pay attention to this sermon, okay? I'm going to give you three, three steps on how to be a missionary in London. My hope is that you make desire to be part of God's mission. That you don't see God's mission as an obligation but something that gives you pleasure. Because the guy on Friday, he was on a mission, okay? He was on a mission, a wrong mission. But that guy, he was bold. 
And sometimes I look at our, our, ourselves, not no mosaic, okay, but our church, and I think, are we really on a mission here? Do we really understand the great commission of going and make disciples of all nations? Do we really get it? So, let's look at the first step. Be humble to adapt. Let me read verse 19. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone. This is what, what Paul says. He starts the chapter saying, guys, listen, I have the rights, okay? I have the rights, the same rights that a soldier has. If a soldier is in a battle, he has the right to eat, he has a right to sleep, he has a right to get his pay. I'm working for God and I have my right to get paid, okay? And then he says, but you know what? I don't want to get paid to be teaching, to be sharing the good news, to be planting church, because I want to boast. I don't want you to think, that's what he was saying to the church, I don't want you to think that I'm doing what I'm doing because of money. So I do whatever I do for free, so I can boast about it. And I'm not saying that because from now on I want to get paid, that's not what I'm saying. Paul, I'm saying that so that can be an obstacle. So there is no barrier. Whenever I say something, you know I'm saying for your good. And here is something amazing. In verse 19, he says, Although I'm free and belong to no one, I don't have an obligation to no one, I have made myself a slave. Oh, this is a strong Alex. I know. I have made myself a slave to everyone. What did Paul mean by saying he was a slave to people? Well, the answer is in verse 20, 21 and 22. This is how he carries on. Verse 20. Leave your Bibles open, please. To the Jews that became a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I, have, I became like one not having the law, though I'm not free from God's law, but, but I'm under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law, to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. So what Paul is talking about here, when he says he had become a slave to everyone, or he has become a slave to the Jews in order to win the Jews, he has become a slave to those who are not following the law, to win those who are not under the law, he has become a slave to those who follow the law in order to win them. So Paul was willing to give up his cultural preferences in order to share the gospel with people from different backgrounds. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? Paul was saying, I'm free, okay guys, I'm free, I can do whatever I want, but I have become, out of my own will, to become a slave to all of you, so I can win. I'm giving up my cultural preferences to win people who are different from me. I'm giving up my rights so that people who don't look like me can be one for Christ. So what is the lesson here for us? Well, our mission is not to impose our cultural preferences on people. Instead, our mission is to humbly, okay, adapt to the culture around us in order to share the gospel, Jesus' culture with them. So what Paul is saying is, I don't have to do what I'm doing, but I do. Why? Because I want people who are far away from Jesus to get to know Him. 
So I give up my preferences so people can get to know Jesus. I give up my own culture so people can get to know Jesus' culture. He was a humble man. Because to give up your preferences, to give up your culture preferences, it requires humility. So what does it mean in practice? Pay attention to this, okay? Numbers, I, you know, I love numbers, okay? So let me give you the numbers here in London. There are more than 3 million international migrants in London and at least 50 non-indigenous communities. This is quite old, okay? I assume the number is higher than that. Over 37% of those who live in London are from first generation of migrants. Man, this is mind blowing, okay? Do you remember when I said that you don't need to move abroad to be a missionary? So you can be a, actually a missionary in London and be reaching out different nations at your doorstep. <laughs> oh, this is just great. So the promise made to Abraham through your offspring, all the nations are going to be blessed. So in order to reach them out, we can't expect them to come to us, okay? Oh, I speak Portuguese. So if they want to get to know Jesus, they need to learn the language, so I can actually tell them. They need to learn Spanish, so I can tell them. That's not how, how it works, and that's not what Paul was saying. He was not expecting people to get his cultural <laughs> preference in order to, to share Jesus with them. So we must go to them and humbly adapt to their cultures. We get to know them, we get to know how they think, so Jesus can be made known. My question is, are you willing to adapt yourself, to give up your preferences, to, give, to, to adapt yourself to different cultures for the sake of the gospel? Be honest with yourself right now. Are you really willing to do that? And I'm happy to be the pastor of Mosaic because I think you, if you're here, you understood our vision, right? We want to be multicultural. We don't want to be monocultural. People don't need to adapt to one single culture. We are all giving up. We are all giving up. Okay, just look at Julia, man. Julia and I, oh, do we look like each other? I mean, I'm not even talking about physical appearance. The guy is a rapper, okay? I am into heavy metal. Why are we hanging together? It doesn't make sense at all. We don't like the, the same kind of music. Because of Christ. We are giving up our cultural preference. I've been to some of his concerts. Is it because I like? I'm so sorry, bro. I don't like it, okay? I'm there. Why? Because, because of Jesus. I know he's doing what he's doing because of Jesus. So are you willing to give up your cultural preference for the sake of the gospel? Number two. Be determined to succeed. Okay, let's read verse 22. To the weak I became weak to win the weak, and I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, okay, by all possible means, I might save some. So what does Paul mean? Well, Paul was basically saying that he was willing to work hard, okay? <laughs> He was willing to work hard by using different methodologies to share the singular message of the gospel. The gospel is a singular message, but Paul was not expecting people to understand in a singular way. He was willing to think hard on how to communicate it. How am I going to make this gospel clear to everyone from people from different nationalities? from different backgrounds, ethnicities, cultural backgrounds, social class, how am I going to do that? He worked hard. That's why he's saying, you know what? By all means possible, by all means possible, I need to make Jesus known. <coughs> so what is the lesson here for us? 
our mission is not to give up on people who can't understand the gospel through a singular, a specific method. Instead, missionaries, Christians, okay, we're all on a mission, missionaries, do whatever it takes to make Jesus known. Think for a minute, okay? Who was your best teacher? Just picture your best teacher in your mind. Do you have someone in your mind? Yeah? Yeah? Let me tell you who my favorite teacher was. My favorite teacher was the person who treated me as an individual, not as a group. And we have a teacher here, right? <laughs> so it's easy to treat the students as a group. So hey, he gets at the front and he knows that that person doesn't learn in the same way as that person, but he doesn't care. It's easier to go through a single method. And you know that not everyone is learning the same way, but you don't care. But my favorite teacher was someone, he, he, he knew me. And every single time that he, he could see that I was not getting what he was trying to communicate, he would sit down with me later on. Say, oh, did you understand what I actually explained today? today. I, I was honest, not at all. <laughs> I had no clue. So he would help me to understand in a different way. I don't know if that is your case. I don't know if your favorite teacher was someone who valued you as an individual rather than as a group. So missionaries, Christians, when we share in the gospel, we need to treat people as individuals. We need to work hard to communicate the gospel in a way they can actually understand it. So what does it mean in practice? Oh, big, 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 big statement. Unfortunately, many churches and mission organizations in London focus on a specific methodology when sharing the gospel. Let's, let's focus on in London, okay? So whoever finds it difficult to understand the gospel in their way is ignored. This happens especially with people with a low level of English. Okay, you don't understand English, you know what? Why don't you find a Spanish speaking church? Why don't you find a Portuguese speaking church? Why don't you find an Albanian church? Why don't you find a, a, a church that looks like you? Because it's so hard to work with you. It's, it's difficult. You are difficult. However, this is wrong, okay? Let me repeat it, okay? To segregate people, to segregate Christians, it's wrong. I don't see Paul doing it. Actually, I see Paul in Galatians 2, seeing, seeing Peter doing the same thing, segregating himself with the Jews, leaving aside the Gentiles, those who are not Jews, and Paul gets mad. And he rebukes the rock, Peter, in public. Peter, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you dividing? We are all different, but we need to be united with Christ. You can read Galatians at home. He's really angry, okay? So I think it's wrong. Paul, sh uh, so Paul says that we must do whatever it takes to share the gospel with those who are different from us. Okay, let me, let me share a story with you. Uh, some of you met Reed and Sarah, American missionaries. We stayed with us for four months. One day, Reed and I, we were doing outreach on the streets. He meets a guy from Colombia. Okay, I meet actually this guy from Colombia. He wants to read the Bible. And I thought, you know what? This is going to be a great experience to read. Because I know he doesn't speak Spanish. He won't understand. This guy, his level of English is not that great. That's it. Let me see how missionary he is. Both of them had to read the Bible together. What do you think happened? Do you think was it easy? Was it easy? It was hard. It was difficult. I could see Reed sweating, okay? And I would stay on that corner just watching it and just his mind thinking, man, <laughs> work hard, brother. And he, he would use his body language to communicate something that it would be simple to say in English, but the guy couldn't understand, so he had to work hard. 
And I said, well done. He was like, no, why don't you do it, Alex? It will be easy for you. No, 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 no. You do it. Let's put into practice what Paul is saying here. Do whatever is possible, read. If you need to, draw, draw. If you need to actually teach the guy English, teach him English. If you need to learn English, learn English. Uh, uh, Spanish, learn Spanish. Do whatever it takes, man. And where is read now? In a country where they don't speak English, they speak French. He has to learn the language. He has to, com to communicate the gospel in a way that people can understand it. My question, how determined are you to share the gospel with those different from you? Are you, you determined to, 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 to make it happen? Or are you going to do as many churches do? Us, uh, do? Oh, no, 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 find, find, a, find a church for your people. <laughs> Thirdly and lastly, be faithful to the truth. Verse 22 again. To the weak, I become weak. To win the weak, I have become all things to all people, so that by all means possible, I might save everyone, right? It's, it's wrong. Well, you, you help me to correct the, the slides, but it's wrong. It's wrong, right? Okay, can you read verse 22, please? Just, just to make sure this is... Because if I, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure he said, I, I might save everyone, right? Yeah? No, it says save some in the New Living Translation. What does he say in your version, John? Some. Some? Yeah, because you can't save everyone, no? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> so why, why is Paul so pessimistic here? Okay, why? Why are you going to work so hard? Why are you going to work so hard to make Jesus known? And then you have this mindset that, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm doing whatever I can, okay? Working hard here to communicate the gospel. And then he says, I might save some. Come on, Paul. This is not how we think, man. You need to think as a businessman, okay? You need to think positively, okay? Don't attract this bad negative thoughts yourself. Don't try that yourself. But he's very pessimistic here, right? Why was he so pessimistic? Well, Paul was someone willing to contextualize himself, right? He was humble enough to adapt himself to different cultures. He was, he was humble enough to adapt. And he was someone willing to, 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 to communicate to change them the way he shared the gospel so he was willing to adapt himself to adapt the way he shares the gospel but he was not willing to change the gospel in itself right that was the conversation we had on tuesday is it time to change the bible to adapt the, the bible to our our time isn't the bible outdated well Therefore, by being faithful to Jesus, Paul knew that some people would not respond positively to the gospel, but with resistance. He knew that. He knew that by, by communicating the gospel in different ways, by adapting himself to make sure people could understand that he was not sharing his views, but the gospel, he knew that people would refuse, even though some people would hate, actually, Paul, for sharing the good news of Jesus. Because that's what Jesus said. You are going to be hated because of me. So Paul knew that. He was not lying to himself. And he actually, he was, most of the letters he wrote in this book, 13. Where did he write them from? Prison. Prison. Why was he in a prison? He was sharing the gospel. How was, how was he killed? Why? Why was he killed? For sharing the gospel. For sharing the truth. And the truth can't be modified. Okay? We don't adapt the truth. What is the lesson for us? 
a missionary does not change the message of the gospel to make it more appealing to people. Listen, you know what? This is a church plan needs to grow. Don't you think I want this thing to grow? Huh? Would I move to Brazil, to London, giving, up, giving away a lot of things to see this happening? I want to see this. So how do you think it would be easier to make this grow? Adapting. Oh, uh, if I come here from the front, prepare really nice talks to you, saying, what? I would just do a survey here, okay? So he likes that kind of music, he likes to do that, that, that. He doesn't like that kind of view. I would adapt everything. I would say what you want to hear, and guess what? You would be keeping talking about me. Oh, Alex, he says that. Oh, it's so beautiful what he says. He's so, he's so adapted to our culture. This is the church we need to be part of. And I'm telling you, this place would be part of people. But a missionary shares the message of the gospel, being faithful to the truth, and knowing that many people will not be saved. That's the sad reality, okay? That's the sad reality. The gospel is a message that says that God came to earth to save us for free. You don't need to do anything to be saved. Jesus did everything. The only thing you need to do is to... What do you need to do to be saved? Just believe. Just believe. Believe and repent. What does it mean to repent? You look at Jesus and you think, you know what? I want to live a life. I want to live in a way that pleases Jesus. I don't want to live that old life that doesn't please Jesus anymore. So what does it mean practice? Well, you can save yourself, you can, you can save your friendship, okay? Pay attention to this. You can save your friendship by being politically correct. Do you agree with me? If you're diplomatic, you can save your friendship. But only save your friends from hell by telling them the truth, okay? Don't lie to yourself. Don't think that by hiding the truth from someone, you are actually helping them. You're not. You're not. So always be ready to talk about love, grace, forgiveness, but do not ignore sin, hell, and repentance. My question, are you willing to be faithful to the truth when sharing the gospel? Instead of being faithful to the culture around you? To conclude, I don't think it's hard to be a missionary in London, right? I don't think it's hard. You simply have to be someone humble enough to adapt to other cultures instead of imposing yours Determined enough to succeed, doing whatever it takes to communicate the gospel, instead of giving up when, when challenged, and faithful enough to the truth, instead of faithful, being faithful to the culture around you. God is a missionary God. He allows us to be part of this mission Life is short. Hell is horrible. The eternal separation between God and us, it's terrible. It's hell. He's the source of life, okay? God is the source and giver of life. By being far away from Him, you are dead. The name for death is hell. Jesus is great because he came to save us. Life is short, hell is horrible, Jesus is great, and trust me, forever is a very, 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 very long time. We have a mission to accomplish, okay? Because the guy from Friday in London Bridge, he was not playing. He was working hard for Satan. And I think the church has been playing for a long time here, ignoring these facts. And the Bible is full of 
way showing us how to accomplish this mission. We just need to be humble enough to adapt to our cultures, the cultures around here. Being determined to make sure people understand that salvation comes from Jesus, not by killing people. We are willing to die for this, okay? We are not willing to kill for this. And that the message does not change. Let me, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Bible because it's through the Bible that we can get to know you and we can understand what you want from us. Does not, does not allow us to make assumptions as some people make assumptions about you and about your mission. Your mission is not about violence, but about love, Father. So help us to love people by, by, being, by sharing this good news with them. Help us to be humble, Father, to submit to you in a way that we may accomplish the mission that you gave us, so that some might be saved, Father. Would you please give us boldness to share the good news with those who are perishing, who are, or with those who are far away from you? I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.